It's a building that evokes feelings every time you drive past it, but today you may not even recognize what was once one of the most controversial structures in Oklahoma. The former Kermagee Plutonium Processing Facility outside of Crescent sat empty for decades until a Guthrie businessman saw potential and brought it back to life. It has sat there for nearly 40 years untouched, a reminder of a dark night in 1974 when Karen Silkwood was driving to a meeting with a reporter, a meeting that never happened and a controversy that followed, drawing international news coverage to Oklahoma and the Kermagee Corporation. For years, the odd-colored plutonium building on the old Kermagee fuel fabrication site was a contaminated mess. Its new owner is Tom Stewart. What they wanted to do was to somehow demolish this building and make it go away and make a green field out of it. But the cost to do that was just prohibitive. The, this thing is built like a, well, it's built to nuclear reactor standards, so it's, it's a bomb shelter. Eventually, the decision was made to scrub the building clean. Today, every wall bears the marks of the grinders and the grids that were mapped out to make sure not one speck of uranium or plutonium was missed. This is the exterior of the processing plant today. It is now the headquarters of Stewart Industries International and home to Cimarron Aerospace. The Cimarron Aerospace is a, uh, a company that uh, we created and uh, began in January of this year and it's the uh, computer and American control machining of aircraft parts. Mike Burnett is director of operations for Cimarron Aerospace. Computer numerical control, so it's it's all uh, all driven by a computer. So we we create a program to to make the part that we're wanting to make, not just running one or two, but running thousands at a time. Tom and Mike gave us a guided tour of the former plutonium processing plant, showing off the new computerized machines that could make any aircraft part they want, and their plans for expansion a move that will come once the facility and its processes are approved by the federal government. The aviation side of our, of our forces today have a number of problems and they've got to get fixed. You don't have the money to go out and start new programs for aviation within the military, so we know that there are a lot of assets sitting around waiting to be fixed. Eventually, Stewart expects to be running two shifts a day and producing thousands of new parts for the U.S. military. Stewart owns another building with a history. This one is in Roswell, New Mexico. It's known as Hangar 84. Our hangar at Roswell is Hangar 84, and that, uh, if you would Google Hangar 84, you would uh, find a tremendous amount of information uh, relative to our hangar in Roswell that says that's where they took the aliens of the crash of uh, July 4, 1947. So we're all about having those kind of buildings. <laughs> Stewart also bought the uranium processing building that used to sit on this cement slab at the former Kermagee site. That building was moved to Guthrie, where it now sits, part of Stewart Industries Industrial Park. But if you don't put people to work, you haven't achieved anything. And so what, what we want to do uh, is take uh, today's technology and infuse it into yesterday's buildings to create a new tomorrow. Reminders of the plutonium building's past do still remain. The tags above the doors to rooms that once were used to make plutonium rods are still there. To get into the main machining area of the plant, you still have to walk through what was once an airlock. They left the button on the wall for the last door, even though it's no longer hooked up. The way you entered the facility has been changed. You couldn't, you couldn't get into the back side of the building without going through either the men or women's restroom and locker rooms. Uh, that all has been changed. The area where the machine shop was just a labyrinth of, of small laboratories and a maze of rooms that uh, before the electricity was on, you couldn't, it was difficult to figure out how to even get through the building. Tucked away in a far corner of the building, Stewart found new barrels marked for the transport of plutonium rods still waiting to be used. Just above are the boreholes made by the company that was hired to remove all the contamination from the structure and a door that now goes to nowhere, once part of the massive catwalk system inside the plant. This section was removed because there was some contamination in this, in this wall right here for whatever reason. Stewart Industries has plans to utilize the basement and the second floor, which is still home to the plant's cooling system and electrical components, some of which are actually back in use. 
Next to the power room are the air handlers that still bear the name of the old owners. At the far west end of the building is the old shipping area where the cooling pond sits, along with a series of small square holes in the floor. Remove the steel cap and you uncover holes that were once home to the fuel rods waiting to be lifted into barrels for shipping. In the middle of the plant is the safe with its massive steel door where the raw plutonium was once housed after it arrived at the facility. Tom Stewart sees a bright future ahead for his Oklahoma and New Mexico facilities. We believe that 2017 is going to be a, a breakout year for us in a number of ways. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a lot of plans, uh, acquisitions of other companies, consolidations, and uh, so we're looking forward to it. Stewart also bought the old coal gasification plant, the only other building left on the former Kermagee site. He has plans for it, as well as some 80 acres of land in the southwest corner of the site, for an eco-friendly industrial park. Meanwhile, the plan to remove and clean the uranium and other polluted groundwater still on the site await final approval from the NRC and the Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality.